The Funeral Day Sanan 28 July 1962 Namo Tassa Pagawato Arhato Samma Sammutassa Anitza Vata Sankara Upada Vaya Thammino Upadzitwa Nirachande Daesang Vopasamo Sukhodi if we have not examined this verse by way of the fundamental principles of truth, we are liable to think of it as just a verse which is repeated every time there is a funeral, whereas, in fact, it is like a shadow which follows us and reveals the basic truths which are there in all beings and sankharas. This verse may be essentially translated as follows. All sankharas are unstable. They arise and then die away. The complete cessation of all sankharas, which are constantly arising and ceasing, when done finally, is the greatest bliss. This verse says that sankhara tammas are unstable, impermanent, that having arisen, they can then cease, and we can see that whatever types of sankharas are dangerous to everyone at this present time, and whatever types of sankharas are the cause of tears, of melancholy partings, of depression and sorrow, of good cheer and rejoicing, of love and hate, and endless heartfelt anxieties and worries. With regard to all of them, the Lord Buddha taught, saying, Anitta Vata Sankara, these Sankaras are unstable. We should all take this to heart, for here in this present instance at this funeral, there is the principal witness and confirmation of it, letting us see it in a way that we cannot deny. For here is the venerable Tau Kun Tamatedi, who had great virtue and great merit, who trained and taught people to know the difference between good and evil and to turn themselves into good people. In addition, he developed what Bodhisompon here, brought it to prosperity, and maintained it for the last forty years as a place where Buddhists of all types may practice what is good. But then death had to come, and he went from the living to the dead. This is what is meant by all sankara tammas are unstable. Having arisen, they then break up and cease, or, as we say, they die. Just that. For this reason, all of you should realize that his sankara tammas and ours are sankara tammas of the same kind. They have been born and have arisen as a form, ropa, a body, gaya, as a woman or man, and gradually a natural process of change takes place from the time of birth. For they become children, then young men or women, and then elderly and old. And when the changes in their natures have reached their limits, they display the phenomenon of breaking up and coming to an end, letting all of us see it and name it, saying dead. We are speaking of this type of Sankara Tamma only, for we must not think that just any type of Sankara Tamma, such as those which are assumed to be natural things, are the causes of endless tears of all beings throughout the world, for it is only sankara tammas of this type which are supremely important in the world. Love, hate, melancholy partings, delusion, pleasure, sorrow, and depression, the whole lot of them come from just this kind of sankara tammas, and so in regard to them this verse is quoted, which comes from all the buddhas of the past, all of whom taught that anitta vata sankara, all sankaras are unstable, Having arisen, they come to an end and cease. But it is not only those Sankara Tammas which have already died that are unstable, not only those that are here before us dead that have been born, grown up, and then died away. We ought to turn this towards ourselves, for each of our bodies over which we rule as its owner here and now at this present time is nothing but this type of Sankara, whose nature changes in the same way. These sankharas become old and senile, they cannot last long, and they will inevitably be broken up and destroyed in the same way as the venerable Chao Kun Tamitedis. Love takes place in this type of sankharas, hate and delusion also take place in them, and they are the cause of gladness, of regret, and of receiving dukkha and affliction. Sankharas of this type can be those of an animal or a human being, they can be of low or high class, they can be good or evil, and they can be those of the average person, of the black or white, or of the beautiful or ugly person. All of them are sankara tammas of this type. May all of you who are listening, Obanaiko, turn inwards and constantly teach yourselves. 
Don't just think that other people die, that other people break up and disintegrate, or that other people experience dukkha and hardship just because of the types of sankara tamma which other people and animals have. We must understand that this type of sankara tammas are like our treading feet, which walk onward step by step. Of all the types of sankara tammas which have come into existence in the world, None are as important as those which make up the bodies of animals and people, and which have the nature of breaking up and disintegrating and following this course since past ages, and then coming to birth and being born again. In this way, we ourselves have also been born, grown old, sickened, and died, time after time, since past ages, due to this type of Sankara Thamma. We have loved and hated, and shed tears, and also lost the strength of body and mind countless times already, due to this type of sankara tamma, and we are unable to know our past lives. This is avidda, the ignorance we make for ourselves, letting it wrap round and cover the jitta, and preventing it from knowing the past, and making it go round and round, changing again and coming here, going after becoming in birth, and being under the sway of good and evil tendencies. Being born and having a body, sometimes appearing as an animal, sometimes as a human being, sometimes as a high person, sometimes low, at times being thrown into prison and experiencing dukkha and hardship, and then becoming the son of a deva, a devata, indra, or brahma, and then changing and altering and becoming a human being once again, being all confused and mixed up all the time by virtue of abhidda, one's deluded self. And this is the way that every one of us has gone, but we are unable to estimate the wherefore of our past lives. All the foregoing is the story of the Sankara Thammas, so we should use Yoniso, which means wisdom, to investigate in accordance with the principles of true Thamma that are proclaiming themselves everywhere throughout all the realms of existence, the Lokatatu, for they can never have time to be calm and quiet down. In other words, birth, old age, sickness and death are there in both animals and people, outside and inside our homes, in the countryside and the town, under water and on the ground, under the earth and in the air. Wherever beings and sankaras dwell, these natural processes are bound to be shadows yoked to them and attached to them, and following this type of sankara around. But they have not yet come to what is ours, and so we are not interested in such things, nor whether it will be like this with us or not. When people or things have a relationship with us, we feel that we own them, insofar as we have our side of the relationship with these types of beings and sankaras, and therefore birth, old age, sickness, and death are seen with the greatest impact in our own homes and families. In other words, our father, mother, brothers, sisters, children, nephews, relatives, friends, husband, or wife are sick, feel dukkha, and are parted from each other. But when we have looked into the ways of nature, we will see that these things are making themselves known all the time, and whether a Lord Buddha comes to be in the world or not, nature, or in other words, birth and death, and being separated, which is the lot of beings and of the sankaras, is something which has been there since ages past. This is the way of it. We have all seen this today, for it is there in the urn of the Venerable Tsao Kun Tal which is just the urn of a dead person. He has died and has attained the honor of being put into an urn. But for us, how will it be? Whether put in an urn or not, when life is ended, it is just said that a person dies or an animal dies. They are there even in fish paste and in fish sauce, for these are just beings that are dead, and even the market is full of live and dead animals. In fact, it is the graveyard of beings from all over the country. If we investigate this story of life and death, we will obanaiko, go inwardly to investigate those sankaras with which we are at present living and maintaining and looking after, and see without doubt that they are of the same type as those of beings and sankaras everywhere. Because of this, the words anitta vata sankara are most seemly and suitable to the time and place. The place refers to the world, which is replete with births, old age, dukkha, afflictions, and also replete with destruction, death, and partings from beings and sankaras. This is what we call the place. Tamma then shows us how to track down these conditions, which are in a constant state of change, uncertainty, disintegration, and cessation, or uprising, and then disintegration and cessation, which is constantly happening to everyone. Furthermore, this saying which the Lord Buddha spoke is appropriate at all times and in all ages, not only today and tomorrow, but throughout aeons of time. 
For we should realize that while there are these unstable, changeable beings in samkaras, these words which the Lord Buddha revealed are still true and will always remain so, and they are the Svakata Tamma, which he taught appropriately in accordance with the principles of truth as they really are. A person who contemplates the Sankara Tammas and sees that they are unstable, Dukkha, Anatta, and things which disintegrate and end, in which there cannot be found even the least part of any real essence, will then have obtained something of the real essence to make him not negligent in his own Sankaras, which, whether those of a child, a youth, a middle-aged, or an old person, are a mass of things which will disintegrate and come to an end just the same because all of them are sankharas of the same kind, for a child is only sankharas, a young man or girl is just sankharas, and a middle-aged, elderly, or very old person are all just sankharas of all the same kind. Sankharas of this kind are pregnant with the latent tendency of disintegration, decomposition, and destruction, which has always been the case on this earth, this being the common dwelling place for the work of people and animals. It cannot be said when sankharas of this kind started their process of changing and retransforming themselves, for there are natural processes of change which are transforming them the whole time. If all of us contemplated with consistency in this way, it would lead to the arising of skillful means in our hearts, such that, all things being unstable, we would search for something which is more stable than these things. All things being dukkha, we would search for something which is more sukha than these things. All things being anatta, we would search for something which is atta, which is more genuine and true than these things which come from natural things, which are themselves just sankaras. If we are thoughtful people, we will be able to obtain value from these things which are not the real essence, so that what is the real essence will develop in our hearts. The Lord said anitta vata sankara, but we must not think that the sankharas which have died, and one which we may have seen and heard about, are the only ones of that nature. For we should realize that nature which we see and hear right now is ourselves. In other words, the sankara tamas of those who have died, and of ourselves, are of the same kind. They follow the same track, go in the same direction, and they all equally move towards destruction and cessation, until ultimately they reach their limit, which is death. When they are dead, the jitta which does not die must go and be born again as uprising sankharas. But the sankharas which arise born from the jitta which lived that life will be sankharas which, whatever their characteristics, will be dependent on the gamma of their owner. The word gamma in this context has the meaning of doing action. Doing good is gusala gamma, doing evil is akusala gamma, and doing neutral actions is avakata gamma, neither merit nor demerit. The person who does these forms of gamma is the owner of his gamma, and it is he who is responsible for his own good or evil and sukha or dukkha. Thus, each one of you should realize that you are the owner of your gamma, and you are the one who is responsible for the good or evil and sukha or dukkha of your gamma, which you have done in absolutely every case. Because of this, all of us have differences, even though we have been born with human forms which have been given the name people, and in so far as we are all people, we are the same, but our characteristics, demeanor, habits, behavior, knowledge, skill, the strength of good tendencies, stupidity and lack of wisdom, and wealth and prosperity are all different. Even living in the same place, the same house, the same town, the lives of people differ so that they variously have a lot or little of sukha or dukkha, and they have all sorts of different degrees of stupidity and cleverness in all sorts of different ways. The Lord called this the fruit of gamma showing up, which has come from gamma that one has done in some place, on some day, of some month, of some year, and in some life. It was bound to become manifest to the jitta of the one who did it, and the one who did it is bound to be the owner of the gamma, and having done it, the fruition of it, which is sukha, dukkha, good, or evil, is bound to be his lot. One has to accept sukha or dukkha accordingly, because one is oneself responsible for one's own gamma, and this accords with the laws of nature. There is no need for anyone to command us to be responsible for the results of the gamma that we have done, and even if we want to go against it, we cannot. We may, for instance, have dukkha and physical hardships, and our hearts may be full of anxiety and be troubled, and we may be starving and in want because of poverty. But it is impossible to find anyone who will stand in our place and pay back the result of our gamma, which is our own dukkha. 
It is bound to be our own burden, and we are bound to receive the fruits of our gamma. There is no alternative. As for a person who is intelligent, clever, and wealthy, who has never had much illness, who has physical well-being and an easy heart, who, when he thinks of anything that he wants, it comes to him as though the gods sent it, and wherever he goes, people look after him with care and respect and venerate him, and he has noble rank, status, titles, and servants, and plenty of wealth, but in the same way, he cannot let anyone else be the recipient of this burden of good fortune, for each of us is bound to be responsible for the results of his own good gamma. This is the way of gamma, and the owner of good gamma is the heart that knows. Therefore, the heart that rules over this body is what matters, and it is also what matters both in the ways of the world and of tamma. So we ought not to be careless about our hearts, but try to train them in the way of good until it becomes habitual. The way of good means, in the worldly sense, that we make ourselves to be good citizens, and in the sense of tamma that we have the highest intention to go further in the essential meaning in tamma and in good, skillful action. When our characters have been trained in the way of good until they have become apparent in the heart, which is the owner and the one responsible for it, this is the result that comes from all the good things that we have done. Whatever things we wish to get, we then get as we hope to, because these things that we hope to get are the wealth of the actions which we have done. This is like the time when we were pupils at school, where we learnt our knowledge, but would hardly be able to remember how we learnt it on every occasion from the day we first went to school. On any one day, how many subjects were we taught, and how much knowledge did we learn, from how many teachers, how many subjects divided up in how many ways, and from which school? At the beginning we learnt the alphabet, arithmetic, and so on, until we absorbed all the knowledge that we are filled with at present. We learnt for how many days? On any one day, how much knowledge did we absorb from our teachers? None of us can know these things about our knowledge, even though we were the ones who learnt it. But we also cannot deny that we have this knowledge. Thus, for example, let us think of the letter A, and immediately it comes to mind. Think of the letter B and the letter C, and they immediately come to mind. Think of the alphabet and numerals from one onwards, and of all the theory we have learnt. As soon as we turn our thoughts to any part of it, immediately it comes to mind. But we will probably not be able to remember even the name or the voice of the teacher who taught us this theory and knowledge. And from how many teachers did we receive teaching? How many schools? How much theory? Being able to remember is not important, but we can hardly deny that all the knowledge we learnt from our teachers is stored there now in our hearts, so that whatever we think about appears to us as we want it. The merit and virtue which we have built up is similar to this, for we do not have to remember all the details of the good and virtuous things that we have done, or how many times we did them, or in how many lives and realms of becoming we have trained our characters. For the fruit which becomes apparent is bound to be there in our hearts in the same way as the knowledge we learned from our teachers. Here an explanation will be given of the principles of Gamma, which is the substance of Vatta, the round, and we will come back to an explanation of Vatta Chakka, the wheel, which is the heart that goes about initiating Ropa and Nama. When we die after having built up a lot of merit and virtue, we will be born in a good environment, an elegant way, and the things which come to us as our wealth will all be things which are desirable to us. This depends upon good gamma. Even though we cannot remember the kind of good gamma, nor the day or time we did it, nor how many times, it makes no difference. It only matters that the things which have come to us, of which we are the owner, are all good, such as children, wife, husband, grandchildren, and all our relatives and the friends with whom we associate are all only good people. In fact, whoever comes into association with us, whether near or far, will only be good people. As to our wealth, property, dependent people, and servants who come under our authority, they will all be good, and all this comes from our good gamma. If, however, we have done evil, bad gamma, it is similar in that whether or not we are able to assess how much or how little we have done, it is still bound to make itself apparent to us within ourselves alone. Whatever belongs to us becomes bad and spoilt. One sees a woman, or a man, as the case may be, respectively, and when she is the daughter of her parents, one likes her and feels that she is a good person. 
But if she comes to be one's wife, then she becomes nothing but an enemy, and even one's children, who are born as though from one's own heart, are no good. When ladies or gentlemen of good upbringing associate with us, they become bad people by going along with us. When wealth of every kind belongs to others, it is good, but when it is handed out to us, it all goes wrong and bad. The whole of this is all because of the evil which is within ourselves. The main principle here is that the owner, or the one who is responsible, is we ourselves who have done the evil. So everything which is handed down to us and becomes ours turns bad to accord with what we are. We cannot then turn and blame the external things, saying they are no good, when the owner of them is evil and they change into evil things to accord with their owner. And the owner means the heart who acts, the heart who rules over the body where it dwells, which means that the whole of oneself is evil. This is the story of Gamma, and this explains Gamma, the principle which we use in the process of going round and round, changing and altering through birth, old age, pain and death, over and over again. Having reached some situation in this round when we have endeavored to train ourselves in merit and virtue, which is good Gamma, and to accumulate it until our characters have become used to the way of virtue, we will be like one of several people who are going along a road to various destinations. Someone who has wealth and possessions which are like gifts from the gods will probably travel in physical comfort, ease, and convenience, with his heart relaxed and easy. He rides in a car, and wherever he stops to rest, he has a house to rest in or a hotel, and there is a store in the market where he can conveniently buy what he wants with his own money. But someone who has little wealth and possessions, or none at all, walks in the heat of the sun all day long until he almost dies and he has little money to feed himself. When he rests, he has to rely on the shade of a tree, lie down on the bare earth, and eat food sitting on the grass. He has no roof, cover, or shelter. Mosquitoes bite him, insects fly around him, and when it rains or the sun shines, he has to accept it as his lot, and it takes him a long time to reach his destination. The ways that these two travel are quite different, and even if they go along the same route, they respectively go fast and slow, and the convenience or hardship are similarly different, because the mode of going onwards differs with these two types of people. The person who was previously mentioned as being the prosperous type who has plenty of wealth and possessions will find it easy and convenient wherever he goes, as though he had a mistress to sing soothingly to him and to look after him. He has assistants and servants to attend to his wants all along the way until he reaches his destination, because money and valuables are the power and influence that come from the owner himself who has been able to get them by means of the right tamma, which then becomes happiness for himself. But the latter type of person must put up with difficulties wherever he goes. He lacks things on the way, he is poor and needy, and he has neither physical comfort nor ease of heart. Even when he reaches his destination, he cannot find anywhere to rest and stay, and it is altogether difficult and uncomfortable. Our travelling on in the wheel of samsara is of the same nature, for some people are born here and never see happiness and prosperity. They see only dukkha, poverty, and want. They live hand to mouth and have too little to eat. They are hard up, in difficulties and destitute. They are without money, and they are mentally dull. They search daily for food and should be able to get enough to eat, but they don't. In two or three days, they have difficulty to get enough to fill their stomachs for even one day, even though in this world things are not lacking, for they are plentiful here with markets and shops selling things everywhere. But they cannot think of a way to get hold of this wealth of things, for they have nothing to exchange as barter and they have no money to buy it with. In the end, they just have to accept and put up with the hunger in their stomachs and with lying down on the bare ground, and we can see as many as we want. In the markets in this, our town of Udon, there are both those who have plenty and those who are poor, the latter lying down on the side of the road, some without even a coat to cover them, and even their trousers are made up with numerous pieces of cloth patched and darned together, and are full of tears and ragged edges. They are like this because poverty compels them to be so. Having looked at them, we feel pity for they who have reached such a state, for they are basically human beings in the same way as another. As for the very wealthy, whose money is reckoned in the millions, of whom there are a lot in Udon, they are human beings in the same way, but why is there such a great disparity in their social status? To begin with, 
We cannot blame and find fault with the poor, nor praise the wealthy on this account alone, because they are poor due to gamma and well off due to gamma, respectively. Gamma such as this also dwells within ourselves in the same way. If we want to turn ourselves into people such as those pitiful and disgusting types, we must make that type of gamma and be that type of person. But if we want to be well off, we must endeavor to train and develop ourselves, to change ourselves, and turn ourselves into people who are strong in the ways of virtue, who are resolute, energetic, and diligent, who have the capacity to make special efforts in every way that will bring about an increase of valuables and wealth then we will become the latter type of person, the type who is good and wealthy, as described above. Everything that one can do or get in this world derives from the activity of the heart, which is therefore the most important thing of all. It is this that explains the process of wandering around in the round of samsara, the vatta samsara, which is varied and different in accordance with the overruling tendencies of character due to accumulated merit. Bunya tisampara. Someone who has abilities due to these overruling tendencies of character never has disorder and confusion wherever he goes, and he always has a state of well-being. When he comes to be born into this world, he has little dukkha and few difficulties, and he is able to reach the goal, the end of the road, which is the attainment of freedom from dukkha. Thus, when the time came for our Lord Buddha to be born in the Kattiya line to become the king and rule over the city of Kapilavattu, there were no difficulties, nothing was lacking, and all was entirely convenient and easy as regards wealth, sensual pleasures, attendance, and in fact there was no obstacle to his getting any material thing he wanted. When he left home and became ordained, he practiced the way of merit and virtue, and he attained enlightenment and became the world teacher. After which, wherever he went, there were always people, sons of devas, and devatas to pay homage to him, and were always full of respect. To say that this was so because of the authority and power of the Lord Buddha is wrong. On the contrary, it was because of the Lord's virtue that it came about, and even when the Lord became the Buddha, it arose out of his merit and virtue. In the same way, someone who has banya, skill and cleverness, who carefully investigates and considers things and trains his own heart, if he comes to be born in the world of human beings, he will be a good person having sufficient livelihood, enough to eat, the necessities of life, convenience of travelling about, a house to live in, and all the essential requisites of living, and so on, including his wealth, both in terms of that which is living and that which is not. The former includes children, wife, husband, and friends, all of whom will be good people who are respected, looked up to, and in whom he can place confidence. All this comes about because of the influence of good gamma. While we are wandering in the round of samsara, let us get physical well-being and an easy heart coming to us because of the influence and power of good gamma. When the influence of the good tendencies in our characters is sufficient, we will then manifest desang vobas and we will be able to quell those sankaras which are replete with birth, old age, pain, and death, and get rid of these four. With regard to the words de sang wopasamosuko, there are two ways in which these sankharas are quelled. Firstly, there is the quelling of the external sankharas, which are the sankharas of the physical body. Secondly, there is the quelling of the internal sankharas, being the thinking and imagining of the heart that takes place because of the overruling power of avidya, which is delusion itself. Even though we have been wandering through birth, old age, sickness, and death for incalculable ages and uncountable lives, we have not yet been able to get away from this round, this vatta. The Lord called this abidda, delusion, in our own life or existence and in our knowledge. We may have dukkha and hardship or sukha. We may have known, seen, and met with experiences until we have had enough, but we still do not know the way to get free from this wheel of samsara, so it is replete with sukha and dukkha all mixed and tangled together like rice which has been mixed with a bran made from husks. It is not very tasty or good to eat. The world is mixed up with dukkha in a similar way, for although it also has sukha, it is a mixture of sukha associated with dukkha. The Lord therefore called this world loka sankara tamma, which means anitta vata sankara, uncertain, changeable, fluctuating all the time. At the time of birth, everyone is cheerful and happy, but at the time of death, they are sorrowful and depressed. And the cause of this is delusion in regard to the sankharas with which we are associated. Thus, for example, when at first they are born as a baby girl or boy, 
Oh, how beautiful is this child of ours! It is lovable and delights our hearts. It is clever and careful, easy to speak to and teach, not obstinate, and does not disobey its mother and father who look after it. Then it happens to die, and there is crying and weeping. And this is the delusion in regard to Sankaras. In things such as this, if we have not thought carefully about all aspects of it, we will only be able to see the pleasant side without seeing the unpleasant side. This shows that we have not looked into the matter in a properly reasoned way, which is the true way. So finally trouble comes to us, and the gladness which we got at the beginning does not equal or compensate for the depression and sorrow at the end of it. Whenever we get anything that we want, we feel pleasure to begin with, but when that thing changes and becomes different, gets spoiled and goes to ruin, depression and sorrow arise, and the loss of it is felt much more deeply than the gain. Because there is lack of reason in this, the gain and the loss are not equal. But a person who is endowed with reason does not think in this way. A person who is endowed with the principles of Tamma will think and see what gains come to him, and know all aspects of what he loses, and so he does not become depressed or sorry. For when sankharas of this kind manifest, one should see that their shadow, which is their cessation, must follow them. And one day, sooner or later, it is quite certain that these types of Sankara Tammas will break up, go to ruin, and cease. Even with other possessions which we gained and lost, we should have a basis of reason to back us up and enable us to diminish the gladness and sorrow so that they are not overpowering. The Sankara Tammas, which are the physical body, come into being from the internal Sankaras, and the internal Sankaras come into being from Abhidha, which is delusion itself. When we are under training in sila, samadhi, and banya, until we have become proficient and strong in them, we will surely be able to see the substance of the round, the varta, which is going round and round associated with our hearts all the time. In trying to get our hearts to see the source of our own going round and round, the Lord led the way, saying firstly that we must try to give dana, of whatever kind it may be, such as the dana of forgiving, apayatana, or the dana in which we give goods and things. Whether much or little is not important, but it is important to do so constantly, and this is the way, or one of the tools, we must use. Secondly, we must try to guard our sila, whether much or little, with a wholehearted willingness, and this is another of the tools which can cure the abhidza which is obscuring the whole of our field. Thirdly, Samadhi, which is a calm of heart, is the way, or another one of the tools, that can cure the substance of the round, vakta. Fourthly, banya, which is skill and wisdom, is graded from the basic levels right up to the highest and ultimate levels of banya, and these are tools at each level which can cure the whole field of avidya. When someone has zila and samadhi, or dana pavana, sufficiently well developed, the round, vakta, will have nowhere to hide in ambush, for it cannot go and hide in a mountain, nor does it dwell in the bottom of hell with the venerable Devadatta, which would make it rather difficult to get at and cure. But it dwells here, associated with the hearts of each one of you, for we are the people who are wandering on, and we are also the people who come to birth, old age, sickness, and death. There is nobody to be defeated by, nobody to defeat, and nobody to have the advantage over anyone, for in regard to birth, death, disintegration, destruction, and the parting and separation from beings and sankharas, we all have equality in our wandering on in the round of sansara, the vatta sansara. Why should we not be able to see this wheel which makes us go round and round, changing and altering all the time, causing us to be born and die over and over with the consequent dukkha and hardship, going round and round like this for kappa, for aeons? When Banya has the ability to investigate and examine precisely and to go in until it does see the jetta which is the possessor of the wheel, Vatta Chakka, and brimful of avidya turning us round and round, and sees it quite clearly, then we will be able to destroy the jitta which is the wheel, and we can do so by means of the overruling power of genuine banya. When banya has been able to destroy the wheel, the vatta chakka, that is, the jitta which is avidya entirely, then in regard to the words te sang vopasamosuko, the quelling and cessation of these sankaras, they will cease on their own. Like a tree which has been pulled up by the roots, it is not necessary to destroy all the branches, twigs, leaves, or even the trunk of the tree, for it is enough just to completely uproot it, 
and then day by day every part of it will wither, weaken, and die away. What happens here is similar, for whether the sankharas are those called the Rupa Sankara, in other words the physical body, or the sankharas within the jitta which think and imagine about the past or the future, or are creating meritorious or demeritorious things in the present, they are all bound to die away. Because Avidda, who is chief of the wheel, the Vatta Chakka, and the chief of these sankharas, which are the basis of Samudaya, the origin of Dukkha, has been destroyed, brought to an end, and dispersed entirely from the heart. There remains only Buddha throughout, which just means the heart that is pure. This truly is called Desang Upasamosuko, the quelling and cessation of these sankharas, which are the source of Samudaya, the origin of Dukkha have been brought to an end due to the supremacy of Banya, which has unshakable strength and ability to destroy Avidda, the bad and evil one, until there is nothing left in the heart, and so it becomes the quelling and cessation of these sankharas entirely, leaving nothing to go and build up Dukkha and torment, nothing to go and build up Dukkha, hardship, gladness, or sorrow anymore. Then, even though the sankharas, which are the physical body, still live their life, those sankharas of the type which are samudaya, the origin of dukkha, and which are the deceivers of the jitta, giving pleasure and dissatisfaction and originating gladness, sorrow, dukkha, and hardship, have died away. As in a stove, when the fuel has all been used up and the fire has gone out, if one then puts on more fuel, it makes no difference whether one adds a lot or a little. It just remains fuel and cannot burn up as fire. As for the heart, it can still be called the heart, but this heart has no fuel, that is, no avidda. The sankharas that form those imaginations which arise are then entirely tamma, and whatever is thought about is also entirely tamma. As for feeling, ledana, there will be the experience of some dukkha in accordance with the nature of the kanthas which still exist, but it will not cause the arising of any infatuation or being possessed by at all. Vinyarna, knowing the things which come and contact the senses, then acknowledges them by way of tamma and not with delusion, nor acknowledging them in order that they may be causes which give rise to dukkha, to samudaya, the origin of dukkha, and to the accumulation of gelesas. So they have become mere kantas, which means kantas without any gelesas and tanha, and this the Lord called desung vubas mosuko. Someone who has reached this sphere of tamma has reached what may be called the land of freedom from dukkha, and even though he has the elements and kantas still living there, there is no trouble or turmoil within his heart, and this is Desang Vopas Mosuko all the time. But the sankharas in the five kantas cannot be got rid of, for when the Ropa Kanta has still not broken up, it must be used in the normal way. As with our Lord Buddha, after he had attained enlightenment, he still depended on these five kantas to be the tool for establishing Buddhism. In other words, he relied upon his physical body to walk to various places to teach. He relied on his sankharas that made up the thought and imagination in his heart to explain and display the tamma so that all would listen to him. He relied on sanya to remember where various people lived, in which house and which town, and whether they were suited to receive the tamma of the Lord and to what extent. He relied on vinyarna, the awareness to know that such people understand the tamma of the Lord Buddha and such do not understand, at times when he was answering questions or holding a conversation. Therefore, these five kantas were tools for establishing Buddhism, but they were no longer kantas which gave rise to turbulence and distraction to the Lord as they had previously done. The kantas which had at one time disturbed and troubled the Lord were the kantas that had avidda ruling over them. They were the tools of Avidda, so that whenever it gave them orders to go in any way or direction, there they became Samudaya, the origin of Dukkha, being in trouble and turmoil all the time. But because these kantas were overpowered and forced away from the grasp of the great originator of Dukkha, which is Avidda, the sankharas which were subordinates of Avidda came to an end, and this is called Deyasangopasamosuko, the quelling and cessation of these sankharas, which was said by the Lord to be the greatest happiness, means this sphere of tamma alone. With every one of us, the sankharas, which are the basis of samudaya, the origin of dukkha, create trouble and difficulty for us all the time, and this we know well enough within our hearts. But when we have trained our hearts to attain calm, we will know this for ourselves, until we come to the point where we have panya, which is able to destroy the gelezas and asavas, going in stage by stage from the most gross to the subtle to the more subtle, until it reaches the most subtle, and there is nothing left in the heart. 
even when only Avidya, who is the director of the wheel, the Vartachakka, has been destroyed by Banya, there will be nothing left, and this turns into Desang Vopas Mosuko, the quelling of the Sankaras, so that they are subdued and peaceful. When the Sankaras within the heart, which are there because of the overruling power of Avidya, have died away and gone, there is no more creating of new kinds of Sankaras, and the quelling and cessation of these Sankaras lasts for all time. Even after leaving this body, there is then no going on towards Bhattisanti anywhere, and we do not have to go to birth, old age, sickness, and death any more. This is like our Lord Buddha, who is able to destroy entirely those Sankaras that were baneful and the cause of this wandering in the round, the Vatta, because of which there was nothing left to initiate any future births. This is Sugato, his comings and goings were good, and he led and taught all classes of people to their benefit. When the time came for the lifespan of the Lord to come to an end, we call it Parinibbana. He then abandoned these Sankaras, letting the world pay homage and buddha to them. Or one can say that he abandoned them and let them go back to earth, water, air, and fire in accordance with nature. But the true nature is the Vimutti Bhutto of the Lord, which is the treasure of the Lord alone. And this is called the treasure that is Thayasang Vobas Mosuko, which is Tamma throughout and is entirely pure without any admixture. The Tamma Desana today has told about Sankara Tammas. All of you who are listening and have heard that Anitta Vata Sankara will understand that it is only quoted by rote, but the condition of nature which is implied, which is death, is occurring all the time. On the present occasion there are death and change and transformation going on continuously. Where we are, they die. At home, they die. In the forest, in the hills, in the wood, in water, and on the ground, they die. They die all the time. If the process of change were to make a loud noise like a gun going off each time, all our eardrums would be shattered by the noise of these changes. The process of breaking up and disintegration would become very loud, and the dukkha and hardship in each family and home would also become loud. From animals experiencing dukkha, from those living in the water or on the ground, it would become loud. Even we who are sitting listening to a desana at this moment have dukkha, and from each one there would be a loud noise like the sound of guns, loud with the story of the mass of dukkha. Our eardrums could not stand it if the mass of dukkha displayed itself loudly to everyone in this way, and how should we not then accept that anitta with the sankara, for thus it is over and over again all the time? It is necessary to show the truth in such a way so that you who are listening may examine and see that all these things, when they occur, do in fact make a loud noise like this all the time, but they have no gun to give a signal to us at the moment of Dukkha, or when changes appear in beings and Sankaras of all types. So it seems as though Dukkha is only there in oneself alone, that trouble, distraction, turbulence, and difficulties are there only in oneself, and that to be in want poor, dull, and bad are only in oneself, and it is as though the world of other people is all gold, but in truth it is all the same world, the Tatu, four elements, and Kantas are the same, the world of Anitta with Sankara is the same, the heart is the same, and it has Dukkha in the same way. I request that all of you who are listening here should examine this verse carefully, which goes, Anitta vata sankara. All sankaras, both external and internal, of you and of we, are unstable. Uppa Having arisen, no matter where, they break up altogether. Let us try to bring about the quelling and cessation of these creators, these sankaras that are the basis of samudaya, the origin of dukkha, so that they are completely and finally dispersed from our hearts, so that resultant sankaras which would be anitta vata sankara, i.e. those sankaras which are born and die, will no longer become manifest in our hearts to cause us any more trouble. This is called reaching the peace of tamma, zandi tamma, calm and tranquil, in other words, supreme happiness, Baramasoka, which is Vimutti or Nibbana. In the conclusion of this desana, may the power and the merit of the Lord Buddha and also of the Tamma and Sankha come and overshadow all of you who are followers of Buddhism and who have made a special effort on this occasion to come from your villages and homes to listen wholeheartedly to this Tamma desana, and may you always have physical well-being and ease of mind. Having given this teaching concerning these words of Tamma as taught by the Lord Buddha, I feel that it is enough for the present, and I now beg to bring this talk to an end. Evang.
Thus it is.